Today, I'm signing an executive order setting out a target of 50% of all passenger vehicles sold by 2030 will be electric. We have currently a serious crisis in terms of how we are going to have enough stock of metal so that we can build the infrastructure needed for that transition. We need a lot more of cobalt as well as lithium and other metals to make batteries for electric vehicles. Existing mines on land could supply the needed minerals, but after decades of extraction, the quality is going down. Meanwhile, cobalt mining is dogged by persistent accounts of human rights and environmental abuses. As demand increases for clean, sustainable energy, solutions will require metals and resources whose extraction will both contribute to global warming and impact biodiversity. So as nations commit to lower greenhouse gas emissions, the conflict is no longer between fossil fuel firms and clean energy proponents, but rather over what ecosystems we are willing to sacrifice in the process. Polymetallic nodules are stones, a bit like potatoes or about fist size, and they sit several kilometers deep, almost unimaginable depths beneath the surface of the ocean. The deep sea nodules have very unique characteristics that they have three of the key metals needed for battery cathodes all in one ore body. That's nickel, manganese, and cobalt, particularly, and they also have copper. That's unusual because with terrestrial mining, you often have to look at different kinds of ores to find the three different kinds of metals. The carbon footprint of oceanic mining is between 70 and 88 percent less than terrestrial mining. Karen Clipson Zone is an area of the ocean that is found between Hawaii and the coast of Mexico, if you will. Um, and that area is vast. It is about the size of the continental US. We're talking about areas beyond national jurisdiction, so no single government has sovereignty or sovereign rights in this space. And so the International Seabed Authority was created to administer these resources. It's not been any sort of commercial scale mining on the international seabed, and so only exploration activities have been ongoing so far. You know, a lot of the animals down there are very small in size, but those small sizes don't mean that they're not important to the ecosystem, to the connectivity to the rest of the planet. Insects are absolutely essential to life on Earth. Microbes are absolutely essential to life on Earth. Without them, planetary life would collapse. Perhaps is the same in the deep ocean. Our entire planet is under stress and our ocean especially. Our deep ocean is poorly explored, it's poorly understood. If we move forward before we have the appropriate information to manage these impacts, we could be losing species, we could be losing habitats, and we could be losing many of the functions and services that life on this planet relies on. The reality is, no matter how much research is done, compromises will have to be made. But a deeper understanding of the impacts of ocean mining will help producers and consumers make the best choices for saving the planet from human-induced global warming while minimizing environmental destruction.